What's going on guys, in this video we're looking at two other trades that went down on the second day of the draft. In the last video we looked at the Subban and Truba trade, and this one we're looking at the Miller and Marlowe trade. Now, um, obviously Tampa Bay needs cap space for Braden Point, even with Ryan Callahan on LTIR. Uh, they re-signed Braden Coborn. Personally, I thought it was going to be Killorn probably on the way out. Slightly cheaper, but I think also a bit less of a better player. Instead, it's JT Miller. Now, obviously, as you can see there, a solid player. 25 years old, 84 overall. Uh, top 6 potential still has room to grow in game, making 5.2 for 5 more years. Obviously, his cap off the book. It's a pretty good cushion for them to get brain points signed with the money they already have. And they get an awesome return here, in my opinion, from the Vancouver Canucks. Honestly, it's probably too much. So, um, the Canucks give up a goalie here, who I think is honestly just moving back for the roster spot in Mazenik. 27-73 backup. He's just like an AHL goalie. Really nothing special. They have tons of other better goalies. Demko, DiPietro, Markstrom. The big thing here is the draft pick. So the Canucks traded a 2020 first round pick. Now the pick isn't straight up because that'd be a little bit crazy giving up all hope for Lexus Lafreniere. Thing is, the conditions aren't much better. If the Canucks somehow make the playoffs in 2020, Tim Bay gets that 2020 pick. So Canucks really have to hope that's the case. Personally, I don't think it's going to be. And if the Canucks don't make the playoffs in 2020, they hold on to that pick, get a lottery chance at Lafreniere, Byfield, Raymond, all those guys. But Tampa Bay gets their 2021 first round pick, completely unprotected, no conditions. So if the Canucks don't make the playoffs next year, which like I said, is most likely the case, there's a good chance Tampa Bay is getting like a top 10 pick in 2021. Imagine if the Canucks finally win the lottery in 2021 when Tampa Bay holds that pick. I would feel so bad for Canucks fans. Um, they also give up the third round pick in 2019. So like... I don't really get this from a Canucks perspective. Obviously, you're trying to make a better team, but you know Tampa Bay's in cap hell. They're trying to shed a player, whether it's Miller, Kalorn, whoever. Why would you give them, in my opinion, more than a good return from Miller? Like, you should have, at most, I think, given them a second round pick. Uh, maybe even less, because you knew Tampa had to trade him away. Uh, maybe they thought other teams would be bidding, so they wanted to have the best bid, but... Like, they should have been able to get him for, at most, two second rounders, not risk, you know, a potential lottery pick 2021. So... As you can see here, Canucks are almost for sure going to say no. Like, Miller's got maybe half the amount of value. They do want him, but yeah, trade is rejected there. So, I still can't wrap my head around this. I'll try the trade now from the Canucks perspective. I'm almost positive Lightning say yes. Also, guys, I wanted to show you this. Even after the trade, Tempe's team stats is still champion. Without a doubt, still the best teams in the league. And their forward group is still very solid. Uh, Palat, Stamkos, Kucherov, Kloran, Point, Gord, Ernie, Johnson, Sorelli, Joseph, Andreoff, Paquette. Um, they've got young players coming up in Radish, uh, Kachuk, like, they're still so stacked. I feel like Vancouver honestly did them a favor, and potentially a huge favor. It's insane. Alright guys, so we're not trying to trade from the Canucks perspective. Again, we're using the 2021 first round pick, just because I feel like chances are they're not making the playoffs in 2020. Um, Tampa Bay does want the third round pick, but that's it. Uh, Miller isn't on the block, but I feel like if they have any foresight whatsoever, they know they need to trade somebody to get Brain Point re-signed. Values way on our side. We'll see what they say. And trade is accepted. So there we go. Um, again, I feel like the Canucks just gave up way too much there for Miller. Now, Miller is a good player. I don't want it to come off like I think he's bad or anything. I feel like he's a solid second liner. It's just that they kind of know Tampa Bay has to make a trade. And they still gave them fair value, if not more than fair value for him. Uh, especially when you look at kind of what Tampa got him for um, with the McDonough trade. I feel like they definitely made a, like absolute bandits in that trade. Then flipping Miller here. Um, just insane. Now, having said that, if you look here, you'll see the Canucks now have a legitimate first line, Miller, Peterson, and Besser. So, I think that is definitely a good thing. Uh, second line there, Godobin, Horvat, and Barchi. So, bringing in Miller definitely gives them some depth. They still have a bit of cap room, too. Uh, we'll see if they can trade Erickson or not. That'll definitely be interesting. But we're now going to move on to the Patrick Marlowe trade and see whether or not that would actually go through in the game. So, right here, guys, look at the Marlowe trade. Obviously, a cap dump by the Leafs, and they're paying a premium to do it. Uh, he's only got one year left on his deal at 6.25 million, so one year is really not that crazy, and they're having to give up a first round pick. Kind of insane. Obviously, though, they need that money, not only for Marner, also Janssen, Kapanen. I heard they even want to try and bring back Gardner. Uh, to do that, they'll definitely have to trade away Zaitsev, who has asked for a trade, but uh, expensive price there to get rid of Marlow. I think that's because, like I mentioned with Vancouver, teams know Maple Leafs are in a cap crunch. They need to get Marlow signed, all the other guys, and they're not just going to, you know, help them for free. Even if you think Marlow is a decent player, they're not going to take him for a 7th round pick because I'd be doing the least a favor. They're going to make them pay as much as they possibly can. So that's why I'm still shaking my head a bit at the Canucks trade. But um, what's actually kind of interesting is that the Maple Leafs first round pick has similar conditions. So the Leafs could actually miss the playoffs next year and Carolina would still get their 2020 first rounder as long as it's not a top 10 pick. And I feel like we can safely assume that's not going to be the case. So Carolina's going to be getting their 2020 first rounder, which again, 
that's a big price to pay um, just to get rid of Marlowe's contract, but I feel like it's not just getting rid of that contract, um, it's also giving them the cap space to keep their team together. I feel like the Maple Leafs think they have a Stanley Cup caliber team, so they want to keep going for it every year, and this kind of trade basically allows them to do that. So Marlowe here, I'm wondering, yeah, his value is actually not even like that bad. 39 is pretty old, but he's 82 overall, 6.2 million, like it's not the worst ever, and like I said, I... I bet most of my money it'll be first round of 2020, the Leafs give up, um, not 2021. As well, I think they give up the 2020 seventh rounder. Yeah, again, I'm not sure why. It's kind of like a weird trade there. Uh, the sixth and the seventh, they seem a bit unnecessary. But when you look at this, I mean, the Leafs are paying so much here for the Carolina Hurricanes to take on Marlowe. And there's still a chance they say no because it's so hard to get rid of bad contracts in this game. But I feel like they'd probably say yes. Look at that. Saving salary to resign our pending free agents. We're not comfortable taking on extra salary. That's insane. Like, they have the money. They have $10 million. Even with next year, like, they're going to have contracts coming off the books. A first rounder to take on Marlowe. In my opinion, that's more than fair. And as you can see here, even after losing Marlowe, the Maple Leafs forward group is still stacked. Jaime Tavares, Marner, Nylander, Matthews, Janssen, Brown, Kaji, Kapanen, uh, Batan, Gauthier, Ennis. Of course, they have more coming up. Uh, some other good AHL players. Maybe Timoshov cracks lineup next year. Um, they'll definitely be more than okay. And now, guys, we're trying to trade from the Carolina's perspective. I highly doubt the Maple Leafs say yes. A sixth round pick from Marlowe at first and a seventh. Again, I feel like the bad contract trades are really tough to do in this game because teams know they're bad. So, like, even if you overpay, they're going to say no. But then if you try it the other way, um, they think, like, they're getting screwed. So you really can't pull them off on either side. Hopefully that's fixed for NHL 20. But looking at Marlowe here, forgot to show you his stats and stuff. He's still considered a second line forward in game. Top six potential isn't too bad, especially for his age. And again, real life, 6.2 million for only one more year. Um, we'll see what the Leafs say here. This is medium difficulty. And yeah, trade rejected, even though we we're helping them out in uh, clearing cap space for next year. Um, they're still not willing to do it. Also, I just saw uh, kill his stats. There's Rebuilder. Pretty good for an Eastern Conference final team. So after any Marlowe guys, here's what the Hurricanes forward group could look like next year. Teravine and Aho, Niederreiter on the first line. William Stull and Marlowe on the second line. Definitely like a veteran second line. Uh, Furlan though is supposed to be gone. Svechikov will definitely be in the top six. And uh, Marlowe also probably won't be there. Um, I have heard Carolina say like, oh, we want him to play or whatever. But um, the thinking is that they're probably just going to buy him out. And then once he gets bought out, he'll probably return to San Jose. Um, play one more year and then retire there. Um, but I do want to show you guys what Marlo looks like in a Hurricanes jersey. It'll probably look so strange. I mean, it was strange for the Leafs. I feel like Hurricanes would be even stranger. Yeah, that, that just doesn't look right to me. I think almost for sure they buy him out. Now, because he has a 35 plus year old contract, they actually aren't saving any cap room. Buying him out would just simply save them actual dollars, which Hurricanes would still like to do, especially if he doesn't really want to play for them. And then once he gets bought out, he'll sign in San Jose for like a million bucks for one year. Try win a cup one last time there, and then kind of sail off into the sunset. So um, let me know what you guys thought about those two trades. I kind of gave you my opinions. I feel like Carolina, Tampa Bay were the two winners. Love to hear you guys' thoughts in the comment section. As always, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a thumbs up. If you guys haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Have a nice day, guys. Goodbye.